introduction. In recent years, new theories of firm have been developed under oligopoly which lay stress on the role of managers and their behavioral pattern on the price and output decision of the firm. It pointed out that profit maximization is not the only goal of the managers as they are trying to pursue other goals as well. Besides behavioral theory, the other theories that developed was managerial theory of the firm. The three theories of the firm which have been developed in the recent years are managerial theories of Williamson, Maris and Baumol. Baumol propounded a model of sales maximization in his book Business Behavior, Value and Growth. The sales maximization model says that managers of the firm seek to maximize their sales revenue subject to a profit constraint. Under this, the objective of the managers is to maximize sales. When the profits of the firm reaches a level which is considered satisfactory by the shareholders, then managers are free to maximize their revenue by promoting sales instead of maximizing their profit. According to Maris, the manager of the firm tries to maximize the rate of growth of the firms that is the maximization of the rate of growth of demand for the products of the firm and of the growth of its capital supply rather than maximization of the profits. In pursuing this objective, the firm has two constraints. First, the constraint set by the available managerial team and its skills and second is the financial constraint set up by the desire of managers to achieve the maximum job security. The managers by jointly maximizing the rate of growth of demand and capital maximizes their own utility as well as the utility of the shareholders. The conflicting interest of owners and management coincide with the objective of balanced growth of the firm as it ensures fair return on owner's capital and faith in the managers who achieve their goal. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the concept of managerial theory of firm, why Williamson model is different from other managerial theories, Williamson's utility function, Understand why utility maximization is the goal of the managers rather than the profit maximization. Know the four different categorization of profits. Know the preferences of managers and the profit curve. Williamson's theory of managerial discretion. Williamson's model of managerial discretion was developed by Oliver E. Williamson in 1964. Williamson, like other managerial theory of the firm, assumes that utility maximization is the sole objective of the managers of a joint stock organization. It is also known as managerial discretion theory. Williamson emphasized that managers are motivated by their own self-interest and they try to maximize their own utility function. Similar to Baumol sales maximization model, the utility maximization objective of the managers are subject to the constraint that after the tax profits are large enough to pay dividends to the shareholders. However, it is pointed out that utility maximization by the self-interest seeking managers is possible only in the corporate form of the business organization as there exists separation of ownership and control. This is basically the principal agent problem. It explains the relationship between the principal, that is owner, and the agent, that is the one who performs owner's work. The principal agent shows that whenever the difference between ownership and control exists, then the self-interest of agent makes profits lower than in a situation where principals act as their own agents. Profit works as a limit to the manager's utility maximization 
as the shareholders require a minimum profit to be paid out in the form of dividends. If this minimum profit is not covered, then job security of the managers is put in danger. But the managers are able to hold a powerful position if 1. Firm is showing a reasonable rate of growth. 2nd. Minimum dividends are paid to the shareholders. And 3rd. Profits at any time are at acceptable level. Hence, in Williamson's model, the manager's decision on price and output differs from the manager's decision on price and output of profit maximization firm. Assumptions The Williamson's model is based on some assumptions. These are first, imperfect competition, second, separation of ownership and management, third, a minimum profit to be able to pay to the shareholders. The factors that affect the interest of the self-seeking managers are a. Salary and other form of monetary compensation b. Management slack or non-essential management perquisites c. Number of staff under the control of a manager d. Magnitude of discretionary investment expenditure by the manager. Let us study them in detail. A. Salary and other form of monetary compensation. The salary and the other form of monetary compensation is one of the most important factor in determining the utility of the managers. Higher the income the managers receive, the better is the standard of living and status. So, higher the salary and other monetary compensations and perks, higher is the utility of the managers. B. Management slack or non-essential management perquisites. The second factor that is determining the utility of the managers is the amount of management slack. The management slack consists of non-essential management perquisites such as well-furnished office, luxurious cars, entertainment expenses, etc. These perks are giving the incentive to the managers to enhance their status and prestige in the organization which in turn contributing to the efficiency of the firm's operation. These non-essential perquisites are also the part of the cost of the production of the firm. C. Number of staff under the control of a manager. The third factor that is determining the utility of the managers is the number of staff under the control of a manager. The greater the number of staff under the control of a manager the more powerful is the manager. More staff under manager enhances his status and prestige. According to Williamson, there exists positive relationship between the number of staff and the salary of the managers. In the utility maximization model of Williamson, he used a single variable for the number of staff and salary of the managers as monetary expenditure on the staff. D. Magnitude of discretionary investment expenditure by the manager. The fourth important factor, that is, determining the utility of the managers, is the magnitude of discretionary investment expenditure by the manager. The discretionary investment refers to the amount of resources left at a manager's disposal to be able to spend at his own discretion. This enhances his status and prestige in the organization. Here, the discretionary investment by the managers does not include those investment expenditures that are necessary for the survival of the firm. The discretionary investment by the manager includes spending on furniture, latest equipment, decoration material, etc. Let us now talk about Williamson's utility function. The managerial utility function includes variables such as salary, status, prestige, job security, and other monetary compensation. Out of these, salary is the only quantitative variable which is measurable. On the other hand, all other variables except salary are non-quantifiable, that is, not measurable. 
In the utility maximization model of Williamson, he used a single variable for the number of staff and salary of the managers as monetary expenditure on the staff. The utility function of managers is a function of salary, monetary expenditure on the staff and the discretionary investment. U is equals to F1 bracket starts capital S comma capital M comma capital I D bracket close where U is utility, capital S is monetary expenditure on the staff, capital M is the management slack, capital I D is discretionary investment. Here the variables expenditure on staff salary, management slack and discretionary investment is used as the unquantifiable concepts like power, status, job security, dominance, etc. The variable expenditure on staff, management slack and disinvestment can be assigned some nominal values. There exists a positive relationship between the decision variables that is capital S, capital M and capital I D and utility. Any increase in the decision variables increase the utility of the managers, but the firm always choose their values subject to the constraint S is greater than equals to zero and D is greater than equals to zero. Williamson also assumes that the law of diminishing marginal utility applies so that when additions are made to each of the decision variables S, M and ID, they yield smaller increments to the utility to the manager. Demand curve is negatively sloped. Moreover, under Williamson's model, the demand curve faced by the firm is downward sloping. The demand function can be written as Q is equals to F2 bracket capital P comma capital S comma capital E bracket close. P is equals to F3 bracket starts capital Q comma capital S comma capital E bracket close where Q is the output P is price, S is staff expenditure and E is the demand shift parameter reflecting the autonomous changes in demand. Demand curve is negatively sloped implies a negative relationship between price and quantity that is delta P divided by delta Q is less than zero. As price increases quantity decreases and as prices decreases then quantity increases. It is also assumed that the demand is positively related to staff expenditure and to the demand shift parameter E. Thus delta P divided by delta S is greater than zero and delta P divided by delta E is greater than zero. Any increase in staff expenditure causes an upward shift in the demand curve and thus allow the charging of a higher price. The same holds for any other change in the demand shift parameter which shifts the demand curve upward. It may be an increase in income, change in taste in flavor of a good etc. Cost of production. The total cost of production is assumed to be an increasing function of output. This can be expressed as capital C is equals to F4 bracket capital Q bracket close where capital C is cost and capital Q 
is output. The total cost increases with the increase in the level of output that is delta C by delta Q is greater than zero. Concept of profit in the model. The various concepts of profit used in the Williamson model needs to be understood clearly before moving on to the main model. Williamson has put forth four main concepts of profits. These are actual profit, discretionary profit, reported profit and minimum profit. First, actual profit. Capital Pi. The actual profit is defined as the revenue from sales less the production cost and the staff expenditure. Capital Pi is equals to capital R minus capital C minus capital S, where capital R is revenue, capital C is the cost of production and capital S is the staff expenditure. Second, reported profit pi r. This is the profit reported to the tax authorities. Reported profit pi r is the difference between actual profits and supplementary or non-essential managerial emoluments as represented by the management slack. It is the actual profit minus the managerial emoluments M which are tax deductible. So pi R is equals to pi minus capital M is equals to capital R minus capital C minus capital S minus capital M. Third minimum profit pi zero minimum profit pi zero is the amount of profits after tax which is required to be paid as acceptable dividend to the shareholders of the firm. If the shareholders do not get reasonable dividends, they may sell their share and thereby expose the firm to the risk of being taken over by others or alternatively they will vote for the change of the top management. Both of these actions by the shareholders will reduce the job security of the top managerial team. Hence, some minimum profits should be earned by the manager for the shareholders in the form of dividends to keep them satisfied. Through this, he can ensure his job safety. To meet this objective, the reported profits must be at least as high as minimum profit pi zero plus the tax capital T that must be paid to the government. This is mathematically expressed as pi r is greater than equals to pi zero plus capital T. The tax function is of the form capital T is equals to capital T hat plus small t into pi r where small t is marginal tax rate or unit profit tax and capital T hat is the lump sum tax. Fourth discretionary profit pi d Discretionary profit is the amount of profit left after subtracting from the actual profit pi, the minimum profit requirement pi zero and the tax capital T. It can be expressed as pi D is equals to pi minus pi zero minus capital T. Discretionary investment I D. Discretionary investment is the amount left from the reported profit after subtracting the minimum profit pi zero and the tax capital T. 
it can be expressed as i d is equals to pi r minus pi 0 minus capital T. Discretionary profit is different from discretionary investment. Discretionary profits are the amount left after the minimum profit and tax are deducted from the actual profits that is pi d is equals to pi minus pi 0 minus capital T but discretionary investment equals the amount left from the reported profit after subtracting the minimum profit and the tax capital T. Thus we have discretionary investment I D is equals to pi R minus pi 0 minus capital T. Since difference between reported profits and actual profits arises due to the management slack discretionary profits it can be written as pi d is equals to i d plus amount of management slack thus if management slack is zero then pi r is equals to pi and pi d is equals to i d now we shall talk about the simplified model of managerial discretion. Under Williamson's model, the objective is to maximize the utility function subject to the minimum profit constraint. The minimum profit should be such that it is sufficient to pay satisfactory profit to the shareholders and pay for the necessary investment. Here, we are taking a simple case where there is no management slack that is m is equals to zero objective is to maximize capital u is equals to function of bracket capital s comma capital i d bracket close subject to pi greater than equals to pi zero plus capital t as there is no management slack the discretionary investment absorbs all the discretionary profit. Thus, the managerial utility function can be written as capital U is equals to F bracket starts capital S comma pi minus pi zero plus capital T bracket close. Here, we are also assuming that there is no lump sum tax that is capital T hat is equals to zero so that capital T is equals to small t pi thus capital U is equals to F bracket capital S comma one minus t pi minus pi zero bracket close where 1 minus t pi minus pi 0 is the discretionary profit pi d. Let us now move ahead to the graphical representation of the Williamson's model. The graphical representation of the equilibrium of the firm requires the construction of the indifference curves map of the managers and the profit curve. An indifference map is the family of indifference curves. An indifference curve is a curve which shows different combination of two goods yielding the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. In other words, it identifies the various combinations of goods among which the consumer is indifferent. Consider the figure. Hence, the indifference curve under Williamson model shows the relationship between monetary expenditure on the staff and the discretionary investment. These are the two variables that are determining the utility function of the managers. The indifference curve is shown in figure one where staff expenditure is measured on x-axis and discretionary profit on y-axis. Each indifference curve shows various combinations of staff expenditure and discretionary profit 
which gives the same level of satisfaction to the managers. It is assumed that the indifference curves of managers are of well behaved. Indifference curves are downward sloping. They are convex to the origin implying diminishing marginal rate of substitution of staff expenditure and discretionary profit. Two indifference family of indifference curves can never intersect each other. Higher the indifference curve, higher is the level of satisfaction. The indifference curves do not intersect the axis. The indifference curves do not intersect the axis. This is very important property and need to be explained properly. We have seen that expenditure on staff and discretionary profit are positively related to utility function of the managers. Any increase in expenditure on staff or discretionary profit or in both results in an increase in the satisfaction of the managers by increasing the utility. This assumption restricts the choice of managers to positive levels of both staff expenditures and discretionary profits implying that the firm will choose the values of pi d and capital S that will yield positive utility. Consider the figure. If the indifference curve do not intersect the axis, then the model excludes the corner solutions such as points A, B, C, D, etc. where discretionary profits would be zero in the final equilibrium of the firm. We have derived the indifference curve of the managers and have seen that they are well behaved. Now let us determine the profit function and then the equilibrium analysis of the firm. The relationship between capital S, comma, staff expenditure and pi d, discretionary profit, is determined by the profit function. The profit function explains the relationship between profit and output. We have seen that output is a function of price of product, expenditure on staff and the demand shift parameter. Thus, the profit function is a function of price of product, expenditure on staff and the demand shift parameter. Capital Pi is equals to F capital Q is equals to F bracket capital P, comma, capital S, comma, capital E, bracket close, where capital Pi is profit, capital Q is output, capital P is price, capital S is expenditure on staff, capital E is demand shift parameter reflecting autonomous changes in demand. The profit function which explains the relationship between pi zero and capital S is represented in the figure. We can see from the figure that profit curve initially rises, reaches a maximum and then falls thereafter as the level of production increases. It starts increasing from point A, reaches the maximum at point B and then starts falling and becomes negative after reaching point C. So, initially both discretionary profits and staff expenditures increases with the level of production. This increase continues till the maximum point on the profit curve. Beyond point B where with the increase in production profit curve starts falling, staff expenditures continue to increase. If these expenditures continue to increase and exceed point C, then the minimum profit constraint is not satisfied. So, the region before point A and to the right of C are not feasible solutions. It should be clear from the above discussion that the drawn profit curve 
does not include the minimum profit requirement pi zero. Williamson's model implies higher output, lower price and lower level of profit than the profit maximization model. Now let us summarize what we have done in this module. Williamson model of managerial discretion was developed by Oliver E. Williamson in 1964. Williamson like other managerial theory of the firm assumes that utility maximization is the sole objective of the managers of a joint stock organization. It is also known as managerial discretion theory. Williamson emphasized that managers are motivated by their own self-interest and their tries to maximize their own utility function. Alike Baumol, sales maximization model, the utility maximization objective of the managers are subject to the constraint that after the tax profits are large enough to pay the dividends to the shareholders. However, it is pointed out that utility maximization by the self-interest seeking managers is possible only in the corporate form of the business organization as there exists separation of ownership and control.